It started off as anything but a coronation of Clinton, more of an indictment of what protesters see as a corrupt political system. And DNC goers felt anything but unified until Bernie tried to bring them together. Based on her ideas and her leadership, Hillary Clinton must become the next president of the United States. When it was in the history books, though, Hillary Clinton was set to lead the march to November. I will be a president for Democrats, Republicans, Independents, for the struggling, the striving, the successful, for all those who vote for me and for those who don't, for all Americans together. Now that the DNC and RNC are over, what's next on the road to the White House? We travel that road on This Week in Jacksonville. Good day, I'm Bruce Hamilton. Appreciate you joining us. Hillary Clinton made history Thursday, officially becoming the first female nominee of a major political party taking the stage after a personal introduction by her daughter. I accept your nomination for President of the United States. Following a personal speech by her daughter, Chelsea Clinton. Every single memory I have of my mom is that regardless of what was happening in her life, she was always, always there for me. Hillary Clinton took the stage Thursday night, telling the audience that America is at a moment of reckoning. Powerful forces are threatening to pull us apart. Bonds of trust and respect are fraying. We have to decide whether we will all work together so we can all rise together. Pointing out her differences with her Republican challenger, Donald Trump. Just ask yourself, you really think Donald Trump has the temperament to be commander in chief? <laughs> Donald Trump can't even handle the rough and tumble of a presidential campaign. A man you can bait with a tweet is not a man we can trust with nuclear weapons. Continuing the process of trying to bring her divided party together. Bernie, your campaign inspired millions of Americans. To all of your supporters here and around the country, I want you to know, I've heard you. Your cause is our cause. The general election season now officially kicks off with just over 100 days until Americans go to the polls in November. Joining us now to talk about what lies ahead in the road to November 8th and Election Day. John Falconetti, a local Republican political activist, and Jennifer Carroll, our News for Jack's political analyst. Both of you, welcome to the show. Appreciate Thank you. you being here. John, Thank let you, me start Bruce. with you. Hillary De Cl uh, Clinton delivered an argument for her candidacy that kept coming back to her campaign theme, shared sacrifice. Trump's theme is, I can fix it and I can fix it alone. Did what Hillary Clinton had to say resonate? Yeah. Um, I think as much as anything, the Democratic National Convention that, that I heard, the messaging, and especially if you look back at President Clinton's remarks, and I think he, uh, he, he as much as anybody, tried to rebrand a Hillary Clinton, right? So it was, it was less about, in a lot of ways, less about policies moving forward, but more about a softer, gentler, loving, caring, active uh, uh, nominee in, in, in Hillary Clinton. So to me, I think that was really the underlying theme, and I think that's what they tried to push. You know, the fact of the matter is, even if it resonated, the question becomes, did it resonate outside the halls of the Wells Fargo building? Because when you talk about these conventions, Republican or Democratic, the fact of the matter is, it is a whole different political ball game these days, Jennifer. It is, but the Democrats did have a good viewing as what's being reported more so than the Republicans. So you had a number of people tuning in. For Hillary Clinton, she had to try, to, with plus her speakers, try and, and get a different image painted of her, someone that you can trust, someone that has experience, someone that's compassionate because she's been known to be cold and, and uncaring. And I think in a whole framework of things, they accomplish that a little bit. Whether it resonates out there beyond the halls of the Democrat convention is another story. Well, she always okay. said, I realize that the public eye, I have character issues, and I want to answer some of those right now. Uh, both the Democratic and Republican parties grapple with one issue in common, and it may be the only one, and that's the question of unity. So Hillary Clinton was tasked with making an appeal to Bernie Sanders reporters, to independents, to Republicans. You've got 40% of the electorate who are undecided. 
John, do you think she said anything that can maybe sway some of those who haven't made up their minds yet? It cl clearly, reckless uh, what she needed policy. to do within that party oh, is two things. Thing. When you talk about unity, one is reach out to the Bernie Sanders loyalists, right, to that movement. And, and I think to some degree she was effective, but we still, even last night during her speeches, right, we still saw some, some jeering and some chanting and so forth from the Bernie Sanders supporters. <clears throat> but also if we look at how the Democratic convention was staged, and, and this is, and I don't mean this in a partisan way, but I think in a very objective way, it probably started off as badly as any political convention has ever started off in the history, right? I mean, you look at just hours beforehand, Chairman Debbie Wasserman Schultz has to, uh, has to resign and, and, and really in disgrace because of what had happened. And piecing all of that back together, Hillary's name was even booed during the opening prayer. I mean, how does somebody get booed during a prayer, right? So uh, clearly there was a tremendous uphill battle to unify the party. But as Jennifer said, I, I think they did the best they could. They certainly finished stronger as a result. And we'll, we'll see in the upcoming polls. But Jennifer, look, even after she accepted the nomination, Bernie Sanders supporters staged their own little sit in there. Let me tell you, throughout the whole four days, Bernie Sanders vo voters and supporters have been very adamant about the things that they want, which has drawn Hillary Clinton more to the left than she cares to be. She would rather run like Bill Clinton, more of a centrist, more some in the middle, so she can't capture those independent voters, those dis disaffected Republican voters who feel that they can't vote for Donald Trump. However, she has a lot of healing to get done with these Bernie Sanders voters. She supported TPP. Now she's against T TPP. Now she's back supporting TPP. A politician flip flop. <laughs> and Stop and the supporters, Never Bernie happens. Sanders supporters, are adamant against TPP. Then it comes to with the war. You heard a lot of chanting against. So even during uh, Leon Panetta's speak, speech yes, um, yesterday, that they were booing him, talking about no war, no war. How do you fight ISIS without having some sort of engagement? That's going to be a challenge for her to really get those people over and the Green Party candidate had been capturing and the Green Party candidate went to the convention area and was staging with some of these rallies to get some of those supporters over. So if Hillary Clinton gets uh, supporters to move over to the Green Party and some to stay home and some to go over to Donald Trump, that's going to be very, very um, negative for her returns. Uh, but the fact Absolutely. of the matter is when it comes to this election, it, it ain't over till it's over. What about the Florida delegation? Uh, Ken Justice spoke with Florida's delegates on the convention floor in Philly, looking ahead to what's next in this race for president. Florida delegates did their job. They did it with passion. They did it with gusto. And we were so excited to talk to them because whether they'd been here at this kind of an event before, or they were first time delegates, uh, they knew that they were part of making history, nominating for the first time for a major party, a female as their nominee. We're, we're down now to a championship game. Even though the Miami Heat did not make it to the championship, but this is the Miami Heat versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. You either with Hillary or you with Trump. There's no, I, I, my person is not in the race. We got 32 teams in the NBA. Your team didn't make it. So now it's time for us to come together with unity. Now, over the years, the Clintons have paid a lot of attention to Florida. And I think you're seeing that certainly in the primary vote. I think you'll see that in the November vote as well. Well, we take home that uh, we, we go to work knocking on doors, talking about the issues, talking about uh, the work and the progress that has been made for the last eight years with President Obama, and then to continue to keep moving forward. We cannot afford to go back. In the labor movement, we always say forward forever, back was never. Florida delegates told me that they were awestruck because of, uh, well, the star power. Movie stars, TV stars, singers, entertainers, but also the political stars because a former president, the current current president, the vice presidential nominee, all came and spoke to them here on the convention floor. They were in awe. Stay with us. More discussion here, and we'll learn about a reality star who now has a new key role in Donald Trump's presidential campaign. And oh yeah, she's married to a Jacksonville Democrat. She's a Republican. It's coming up on this week in Jacksonville. Okay, so here are two cans of vegetables. This one I paid for. This one was free because they're BOGO. Maybe this one was free. Either way, 
That's how I save at Publix. How about you? Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? And you can tell them to go themselves. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. Welcome to Honda. Thank you. Get over heels, where should I go? Can't stop myself out of control. Get over heels, no time to think. Looks like the whole world's out of sync. So you like it? I do. Now is the moment to get the Honda CRV you love, the best selling SUV in America, at the Honda Summer Clearance Event, going on now. I'm Melissa Nelson. As a prosecutor, I worked on thousands of cases. I took on the toughest criminals, gang members, murderers. In some cases, I brought the death penalty. But just being tough isn't the only job of the state attorney. You need to be honest, transparent, and accountable, with the character to always do what's right. I will be a state attorney you can trust. Melissa Nelson, a state attorney we can count on. Having three sons is challenging, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. We've been to the emergency room on several occasions. Mason fell in the bathtub. Marvin has broken his arm. Maddox hit his head and had to get stitches. The list goes on and on. But when you have Wolfson Children's Hospital, you can always take them there and they'll help you. We love the way we're treated. We love the facilities. Nothing compares to Wolfson. And I have three boys, so I know. <laughs> Congressmen love to talk about creating jobs, but Washington talk is cheap. So here are a few suggestions. Cut taxes. Every dollar you take is one we can't use to hire new workers. Stop over-regulating. Filling out forms only makes money for the lawyers. And no more bad trade deals. America first. It's that simple. Congress let us create the jobs, and you do yours. I'm Hans Tanzler, and I approve this message. I love Publix Digital Coupons. I signed up for them at Publix.com, and I just clip them like this. Clip, save, clip, save, clip, save. That's how I save at Publix. How about you? Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. The I-Team on News 4 Jax, uncovering, exposing, getting results. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. John Falconetti, Jennifer Carroll, my guests. Both parties are saddled with the most unpopular presidential candidates of our time. Is this going to be one of the most divisive presidential campaigns in modern history, Jennifer? I agree. It will be. I mean, we thought we've seen some negative advertisements and, and candidates going after each other, but nothing compared to what we're going to see going into this new election. Everything wipes off the slate from the primaries to up to the convention. It's now a clean slate going into the general election, and both candidates are going to go after each other real hard. Is there going to be any modicum of civility? Absolutely not, Bruce. No. <laughs> what, the, the, the way that it sets up, let's look at where we are at this moment, right? 31% of, of Americans have an unfavorable, uh, or have only, only 31% have a favorable opinion of Hillary Clinton. 68% of Americans see her as as dishonest and not trustworthy. So there's the there's the makings of of where where Trump and where the Republicans will will continue to leverage. Um, Donald Trump's numbers are not significantly better than hers, right? But but they certainly are better. And which it's 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 going to be a knockdown drag out. For so what you're saying is we're going to sure. wade through a mud bog. Absolutely. <laughs> but here here's where he does have a Donald Trump has an advantage over Hillary Clinton is with the independents. He continues to trend very well in double digits with independent voters. Now, when we get into the debates, so which the first debate will be on 26th of September, let's see how he fares through that, because if he muddles the debate, it could be a downward slide for him. And, and I want to talk about that in just a bit, because what I want to know is, will we finally get some answers as to what their plans are to make things happen? And do they understand they need to develop a relationship with Congress? But we'll get to that in a second. Meantime, Kent Justice sat down with Amarosa Manigault, somebody you may remember from Donald Trump's Apprentice TV show. And he talked about her new role in Trump's campaign for president. 
During the week in Philadelphia, we got to speak with Omarosa Manigault. She's now a key advisor, a senior advisor for Donald Trump. In what area of expertise? She's a key liaison and advisor on reaching African Americans for the campaign. So I am the, the key person to go to in advising him on the African American voter base, how to engage them, how to make sure that they are involved in this campaign and that they know that their issues are being addressed and we're very concerned about what's happening in the African American community. What are the issues and how are you addressing them I'm, from I'm a Donald I'm glad that you're Trump. asking because I have been here at a convention that gets 90% of the African American vote and many African American voters are frustrated. They feel like after seven years of a Democratic administration, unemployment in the African American community is very, very high. Education is very difficult for, for folks to finance and fund. And you still see that there is tension between law enforcement and the community. And so after seven years, I'm listening to Democratic voters saying that something has to happen. We need true visionary leadership and Donald Trump is the person that can do that. How? Well, how much time exactly do we right. have? Because I have a 76-page plan 76 for African American plan. outreach, and I think I have about two minutes left with you. Okay. <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is that the RNC has for years tried to figure out how to reach out to African Americans. They haven't done such a great job. So we're stepping into a party that's already struggled. A significant part of that is educating this voter base of what the policies that Donald Trump have and how those policies will help to advance the community. And so really, it's a lot of education that I have to do when I go into different events and go in and meet with different people of, oh, I didn't realize that was the position. Oh, I didn't realize that that would benefit me. And so I have to work not only in the paradigm that's already set, but also advancing Donald Trump to the community. Expect Omarosa to become one of the surrogates for Donald Trump throughout the campaign leading up to what happens in November. Yeah, diversity is still a big question for the Republicans. As you looked upon the sea of people who were in Cleveland, there was a great lack of uh, apparent diversity there. So let's talk about how the African American community is going to take what happens on the national level and what kind of impact it might have here August 30th when we go to the polls. We've got one high profile congressional race and Kareem Brown is running for re-election. Um, what impact is what happens on the national stage going to have with her? Well first of all for the Republicans with the delegates that were black 18 out of uh, 24 2,474 delegates, which is the lowest number of black delegates they've ever, the Republicans have ever had. So there's a little challenge there to show where's true inclusivity, not so much diversity, but inclusivity with people of color. So Amarosa and everyone else that's going to be on the Trump uh, uh, ticket to go out and, and attract people will have to show how does the picture that's painted any different than what I'm seeing? How, how You're talking about the policies, but I don't see anyone that looks like me really there. With regards to Representative Brown in her re-election race, it's not going to really make a difference because she's she's been very good about getting out her voter base, and she's going to work that as well. With her challenges in the court now, that may be a struggle for her to get new voters that's in this district to come out and support her. Look, Wednesday or Thursday, I think it was, she basically came out and she says, you know, August 30th is the primary, and what's happening in the state attorney's race here in Duval County is going to undermine me because we've got people who are now switching their political allegiances so they can vote Republican in the primary, and this is going to undo me and my chances to get back to Capitol Hill. John? I think um, Rep Representative Brown has um, a, a staggering hill to climb during this election cycle. So I, I, I don't think that the state attorney's office, uh, state attorney's race is really gonna affect the outcome of that. And she's got, she's got a lot of work ahead of her. It, it's gonna be very difficult to run successfully for reelection while you're under indictment. And perhaps she knows that, which is why she's posturing as she is. Exactly. Yeah. When we come back, a look at the differences and similarities of both the RNC and DNC conventions. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Shoe Carnival, a surprise in store. I'm Marco Rubio, and I approved this message. Clinton, Grayson, and Murphy, three liberals with dangerous ideas on fighting terror. All three support the disastrous Iran deal and would close Guantanamo. 
standing in their way. Marco Rubio, a national security leader, Rubio wrote the toughest sanctions on Hezbollah ever passed. He led the fight against the Iran deal and took on Obama to block refugees from terrorist countries. Marco Rubio, fighting to keep America safe. This is Pastor R.J. Washington of the Titus Harvest Dome. Join us on Channel 4 every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. We're going to have a God time. Yes. First, Rod Smith ran for state attorney. Then, Rod Smith ran for state senate. Twice. Then, Rod Smith ran for governor. Then, Rod Smith ran for lieutenant governor. Then, Rod Smith ran for Florida Democratic Party boss. And now, Rod Smith is running for the state senate yet again. Rod Smith, 24 years and still counting a career politician. During Mattress One's tax-free mattress sale, get the new mattress you want and not pay one cent in sales tax. Only at Mattress One. Sealy Queen sets just $5.99 tax-free. Sleep better on a Temper Breeze for as low as $42 a month. Naked and adjustable for just $25 more per month. Plus zero interest for four years. Incredible. You get the mattress, you get the savings, we take care of your sales tax. For the best selection at the lowest prices, we're the one. Visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. Years of inaction and bad choices have left a $2.7 billion cloud looming over our city's future. This year alone, we spent a quarter of the entire city budget on the pension. Unless we act now, this will dramatically limit our ability to invest in a safe and secure city. There is a solution. Vote to extend the existing half-penny sales tax that will only apply to the unfunded liability and provide economic security. Vote yes for Jacksonville. Show them what you got at the Shoe Carnival Back to School Sale. Get $5 off all vans for girls and guys and name brand athletics starting at $49.98. Plus, buy one, get one half off, even on sale prices. Shop Shoe Carnival today. Shoe Carnival, a surprise in store. Everbank Field like you've never seen. A fan experience like no other. See it before anyone else. The upgrades, the food, TVs bigger than cars. Jaguars All Access, tonight at 6.30 only on Channel 4. It's been two weeks of political excitement and history-making for the Democrats in Philadelphia and the Republicans in Cleveland. Kent Justice anchored from both conventions for News for Jackson and shares his personal perspective. Here on the floor of the Democratic National Convention, it was very interesting to see the Florida delegation uh, as compared to what we saw in the Republican National Convention because Florida delegates, there's more of them. So more people enjoying their time, casting their votes. And we also saw something that was very interesting because the delegates were for Bernie or for Hillary Clinton. And we did talk to some folks who said, yeah, I'm getting over what I wanted with feeling the burn. And yeah, now I'll go for Hillary Clinton because they can't stand the idea of that Republican nominee being elected president. We also saw a little difference in terms of the venue because the sports complex here is distant from downtown. Uh, a different feel, if you will, between the Republican National Convention and what happened here with the Democrats. We also know that when they come out of this, they're all after the same thing. Democrats certainly hoping that by the time this weekend is over, their candidate, their nominee, Hillary Clinton, will have a bump in the polls and be seen more favorably than she was before the DNC began. What we heard in Cleveland and what we heard in Philadelphia are two very different things. There's a sharp contrast. And the message I got was that there is no middle ground here. John, how does that pave the way to November 8th? Yeah. So, you know, again, looking at today, 23% of the Americans feel as if we're on the wrong track. So the, the Democrats will attempt to um, to, to paint a, a different picture for America. So whether it's, whether it's right or wrong, that's the uphill battle for them. And, and the Republicans will stay true to a lot of what you heard in the convention, right? They're, they're referring to the terrorist attacks and the economy and so forth. Uh, so you'll, that'll be the struggle in terms of who really resonates with the voters. Well, with the voters, particularly on the Democrat side, the President Hillary Clinton will have to paint the Republican candidate, Donald Trump, as a loose cannon, that he cannot be trusted to make the decision with regards to a nuclear attack, that he doesn't have the experience, that he's not compassionate, that he doesn't know how the middle class feels. And she's the candidate that's going to have all of those things packaged up to work with the people because they can trust her. That's the message. 
Now, whether she'll be able to get that conveyed down to the point where people who have lost their homes, lost their mortgage, can't afford to go on a family vacation, will that resonate with the people to say she should be the one to be trusted? That will be to be seen. I don't think I'm wrong here. That's all rhetoric. So the question that I have, and I, I, I'm as frustrated as most other people, mm -hmm. you know, I hear, we're going to make America great again. How? We're going to protect people by changing gun legislation. How? You mentioned the debates coming up, the first one September 26th at Hofstra University. How do the moderators pressure these candidates to go, on, go beyond their stock answers and finally get some real answers so we have perspective on what they want to accomplish and how they want to accomplish it for America? Well, first, we need moderators that's not going to be biased. It has to be moderators that truly want to get to the answers and challenge those candidates to answer the question and not just have platitudes. If we get moderators that support one or the other, we're not going to get to that answer. Tom? Yeah, I think Jennifer's got a great point. I think during the primaries, we saw few instances where moderators had great success in terms of being respectful but being, being dogged and determined in terms of really trying to get that answer. So we need to see more of that. And, um, and, and you're the professional, right? Uh, you all understand that best. But you can't, you can't be biased and you can't give up too early because you're, they're going to have to dig hard to get these folks to take a more definitive, um, get past the rhetoric and take a definitive I, I've standard. got a minute here. I agree with you wholeheartedly. One of the uh, best journalists for whom I have the most respect somebody who is unbiased, somebody who is dogging and trying to get answers is Leslie Stahl. Donald Trump appeared on 60 Minutes, and he did his platitudes, he did his rhetoric, and she tried to get him to get in, give answers and pin him down, and he, he simply wouldn't. So, you know, even if you've got those kinds of moderators that you suggest, you know, how do we pin their backs against the wall and say, look, we want to know what you're going to do and how you're going to accomplish it because you got to work with Congress too. You do have to work with Congress and that's one thing that Donald Trump has to realize because he tend to say I and I'm, I'm the only one that can but he's really not unless he comes out and do executive orders like Obama did but the bottom line is that it's up to the moderator to handle it and if they don't then the voters will vote accordingly. John 30 seconds. And, and I would suggest that I think especially in a in a wide field of Republicans during their primaries d debates they had the most success in challenging each other. So I would be in favor of watching the candidates, uh, Trump and Clinton, um, be able to question each other and dig a little bit deeper and challenge each other deeper. I think they'll have more success in some cases than the moderators. A political UFC club. That'd be like <laughs> There you go. Thanks very much for being here, Jennifer Thanks. Carroll. John Great to see you. Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Thank this you. week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. Kent returns next week. I'm Bruce Hamilton. Appreciate your watching. Have a great rest of the week. For Jax, we're always covering the news, even when we're not on TV. Stay informed, on the go, and online at newsforjax.com.